The dikes of Holland must be strong enough to withstand a superstorm that may occur once every 4,000 years. To warrant this level of safety, work is in progress at the slopes of the dikes around the western and eastern shelves. In 1953, floods caused almost 2,000 dead, immense damage and utter desperation. The floods led to the implementation of the Delta Plan. By damming up the sea arms by means of heavy dikes, the coastline was shortened by hundreds of kilometers. Not all estuaries were shut off completely. The western shelf was the fairway to the port of Antwerp and thus had to stay open. When the damming up of the eastern shelf came to order, environmental issues had become a matter of importance. To preserve nature, a choice was made for a storm surge barrier. The eastern shelf kept its tides for most of the time. To protect the land from flooding, the dikes along both shelves were raised to a safe level. At the time, the strength of the stone facing was not regarded as a problem. A dike consists of a sand body covered with clay. The force of the breaking waves is absorbed by a cover of stone, nowadays mostly concrete blocks. Water that trickles between the stones can wash away parts of the clay layer. The stone facing is undermined and, in case of heavy waves, the blocks are simply lifted by the water pressure. During the 90s, increased knowledge led to a complete inventory of the dikes in the Netherlands. New insights made it evident that many of the dikes needed extra strengthening. In the province of Zealand, the project Sea Defences was started. Bodies involved in the project are the Dutch Directorate General for Public Works and Water Management, the two water boards and the provincial government. They consult on a regular basis. The water boards, which are responsible for the sea defences, have made an inventory of the quality of all dike segments. If there is any doubt, special tests are conducted, for example, to see how the facing of the dike keeps up in different circumstances. Before cranes and lorries can start working, there is a lot to be prepared. A careful process with strict safety directives must be gone through. Licenses must be applied for. Nature, which is abundantly present, gets special attention. For example, when there are nesting grounds in the working area. Preparations may take one to two years. For each section of the dikes, a specific design is made. The wave attack that is to be expected determines the strength of the stone facing. The strength depends on the weight of the stone per square meter. Depending on the location, the construction of the dike segments may differ. For a dike that faces the sea, the requirements are the highest.
when the plans for a dike segment are ready, work can start. To begin with, the existing facing material is removed. Wherever possible, this material will be reused. Only at ebb tides, work at the lowest part of the dike is possible. Construction starts at the bottom. Working from bottom to top, the new facing is built up. The clay is covered with plastic cloth that is not permeable to clay particles. Water can escape through the cloth, the clay remains in place. The cloth is covered with a filtering layer of stone chippings. On top of this layer the concrete blocks or pillars will be placed. On certain locations the old concrete blocks are reused. Putting 20 cm thick blocks on their side results in a facing of 50 cm thick. Thus the required strength may be reached. The placing of the concrete box is done mechanically. By using a specially developed equipment, a high speed of work is reached. Modern dike facings are made from asphalt or concrete box or pillars. If possible, natural stone, such as basalt, is reused, as long as it meets weight requirements. In the long run, this handicraft will be replaced by new techniques. At some places the facing at the top of the slope is strong enough and only the lower part is in need of improvement. In such cases the solution is found in putting a new layer on top of the existing material. Here this is done with asphalt. To stimulate attachment of vegetable growth, the stones are roughened by scouring off the asphalt. On the slope of the dikes, different kinds of saltwater vegetation can find grip. To create favourable conditions, special concrete blocks with an eco-top layer have been developed. Deciding which construction will be used at each place is a matter of serious consideration. Cost plays a role, but environmental and recreational aspects are also taken into account. Wherever possible, there will be made room for walking and cycling. Reinforcing the dikes of Zealand is a job which will last up to 2015. The costs are considerable. In the long-term planning of the Ministry, an amount of more than 900 million euros has been set aside for this project. The work is well on its way. Eventually, all dikes along the western and the eastern shelves of the North Sea coast, the Isselmere and the large rivers will have to comply with the new standards with one single aim, safety for the occupants of the Low Country.